When you look around Europe, what do you see? Do you recognise the continent you grew up in? Do you ever wonder why our leaders and authorities stand idly by while our countries are decimated by illegal economic migrants? Do you wonder why the mainstream media is silent when it comes to the truth of what's happening? Do you feel like you're going crazy? I have for a long time seen the realities of what's happening in Europe and decided to find out just what the hell is going on. I didn't like what I found and you won't like it either. On November the 27th and 28th, 1995, under the Spanish presidency of the EU, the 28 member states, along with 15 other non-EU countries, founded the Barcelona Declaration. What's that, you say? You've never heard of it? Well, of course you haven't, because this single agreement is solely responsible for the destruction of Europe. So what is it? Known as the Barcelona Euro Mediterranean Declaration of 1995, which was agreed upon by the EU, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt, Jordan, the Palestinian Authority, Syria, Lebanon, Turkey and Israel. This agreement, under the guise of being a trade deal, is actually an agreement to flood Europe with migrants from Islamic countries. But why would they want to do that, you say? Well, what is often the motivation for our leaders to do the things they do? Greed and self-interest, of course. In exchange for flooding Europe with Muslim migrants, they get trade deals and backhanders from the Arab world, who we know are hell-bent on turning the world Islamic and silencing anyone who dares speak out against their oppressive and hateful ideology. In exchange for these trade deals and financial backhanders, the EU has promised to offer integration into the expanded internal market of the EU and the possibility to obtain free movement of goods, services, money and people to shut down all speech deemed to be Islamophobic, xenophobic and racist and allow special privilege to Muslims. The declaration took effect in 2010 when boats loaded with migrants started arriving from the African continent under the guise of being refugees desperately fleeing war. The media exposed us to images of dead children on an almost daily basis to evoke the emotion and sympathy with their plight while at the same time distracting us from the reality of what was actually being played out. 2010 was the beginning of the end for Europe, and it has been in decline ever since. Despite the media's best efforts to keep the truth of the situation under wraps with their refusal to report the realities of the crisis, thanks to social media and the internet, we are able to see daily the realities of what is happening in Europe. The abhorrent rise in sexual assaults and rapes, the thousands of cases of child abuse, the mind-boggling number of cases of FGM, and then there's the acid attacks. It's no coincidence that since 2010, Britain has seen over 1,800 acid attacks equating to one attack every other day, making us the acid attack capital of the whole world. This phenomenon, along with Pakistani grooming gangs, which have again been ignored by our wonderful mainstream media, unless the perpetrator is, of course, white. Then there's the terrorist attacks in Paris, London, Manchester, Belgium, Germany and Sweden. It seems even the killing of our children is considered fair game by these Islamic terrorists, all the while our leaders' pockets are being lined with blood money. And while Muslims are afforded what is, in reality, special privileges to preach hate in our streets, protest our military, burn poppies, rape our children, murder our women, and generally do whatever they please, anyone who dares speak out or stand up against what is happening is smeared with the unfounded labels of racist, Nazi, bigot and Islamophobe. But these labels have no effect at silencing us anymore. We are starting to fight back. Make no mistake, this is the genocide of Europe. Our cultures, our heritage, our traditions and values are all under attack. The freedoms that make Europe such an amazing continent are under threat, including women's rights, the protection of children, the rights of the LGBT community that were fought for over many decades and finally secured, are now at risk from the oppressive, hateful and intolerant ideology of Islam. Women in parts of Europe are scared to go out alone at night in Muslim majority areas. They are being told what they can and cannot wear, what they should be covered up to comply with the sensibilities of Islamic dictates. Sharia patrols tell British citizens what they can and cannot do. Our legal system is used against us to protect Muslims, while non-Muslim British people are punished harshly for trivial things perceived as Islamophobic. 
Then there's the birth rates, the multiple wives, the failure to integrate properly, and very little contribution to the country in any meaningful way. 75% of Muslim women are unemployed and will never work or contribute financially to Britain, while the costs of their housing, maternity, birth, healthcare and education for their many children is all paid for by the taxpayers. For 1400 years, Islamic domination has been the primary goal of Islam. Every country that has ever taken in Islamic migrants has changed for the worst. You only have to look at countries like Iran, Afghanistan and Syria to see how conservative Islam changes a country from free and progressive to an oppressive hellhole for anyone except Muslim males. Wahhabi and Salafi ultra-conservative forms of Islam are being imported into Britain at an alarming rate, with over 70 mosques in Britain already, and countless madrasas teaching the next generation of British Muslims about the particular kind of intolerance, hate, oppression, sexism and homophobia that's taught in Saudi Arabia. The number of women walking around in the Niqab has exploded, and entire towns are now almost completely Muslim. Unless something changes, Britain will be predominantly Islamic within two generations. This is the reality of what's happening all across Europe. All the Eastern countries are fighting back and refusing to mass import the ideology that will never live in peace with any other culture. We know it will never peacefully coexist alongside any other culture because history has shown us this to be the case. We must stop ignoring history and learn from it. Islam has no place in the Western world, and our leaders already know this. It's time everybody else knew it too. Say no to the Islamization of Europe before it's too late.